So thinking about the, the data set that is summarized uh, on this page at the Oregon Health Authority, uh, again, it says the, this includes cases confirmed by diagnostic testing and presumptive cases. Presumptive cases are people without a positive diagnostic test who have COVID-19-like symptoms and had close contact with a laboratory uh, confirmed case. So just thinking about these first couple of sentences here. The data set that's summarized here, would we think of it as a population or as a sample? And sometimes the idea of a population and sample are pretty straightforward. Other times they're not, and we've got to kind of debate it a little bit. I think it's a sample. Okay. Anyone else? We have one. Uh, call for a sample, one vote for a sample. Feel free to type in the chat. Or I think it's a population of, population. It's, I mean, population of Oregon COVID. It's not a population of the world, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? I guess I'll, I'll say sample and the reason why is because um, the whole population of Oregon is in the millions. Okay. That's why I say, I say sample, but I see where Tammy would think, would say that it's a population. It could be the entire population of COVID tests. Okay. Yeah. So, so it does depend on one's point of view. So this data is collected to keep track of what's going on with COVID in the state of Oregon. And the Oregon Health Authority in combination with all the hospitals and county health administrations are trying to find every single person in Oregon that has had COVID since all of this started. So, so I think my opinion on it is this is what we believe to be the population of all COVID cases in Oregon as we're only focusing on Oregon and COVID. So I would take this data set to be a population. It would be a sample if they said, uh, in, they went out to each county health and hospital and just randomly selected 100 cases from each hospital or health authority. Then I would say, oh, they're only looking at some of the cases. Um, so I would take this to be a population, even though it's only part of Oregon, right? Because you can always get bigger, but the question is, is that really the focus here? So the focus on the, this site is, is COVID-19 in Oregon, and they made their best attempt to find every single person that had COVID, whether they had a test or not. So like the contact tracers are calling people that, they ha that had been in contact with someone with COVID, and then they discover that person had symptoms a couple of weeks ago, that were COVID-like and they know they were uh, in touch with somebody that had COVID. So they're saying, okay, you are a presumptive COVID case. Um, so that's sometimes how a person would get in this, this data set here. So uh, I'm pretty sure we would categorize this as a, a population, the population being all COVID cases in Oregon because that's what they were trying to collect here. Um, the other thing to think about, let me just write that down in the notes. Oregon Health Authority. COVID data. Data. So I believe it's a population of all known. COVID cases in Oregon. The other thing to think about, so again, it, it's my belief that it is a population. And, and again, sometimes that, that kind of thing is debatable. Um, 
this is a study, right? We're, we're, they, they've been studying this data, we've been looking at this data. There are two main kinds of studies. There's observational study, versus an experimental study. And I talked about this a little last class. Uh, an observational study is where data is just collected. It's either asked for uh, or it's, it's looked up or given. Experimental study is where we take control over one of the variables uh, that come up with the cases um, in some definite way like uh, you get the real vaccine and you get a fake vaccine, but I don't tell you that. Um, so what do you think this uh, data is? Is it an observational study or an experimental study? Feel free to speak or type something into the chat. Observational? Yeah, this is definitely observational. There, we don't really have any control uh, over any of the variables. We're just looking for people who had COVID and then taking down information that we think is relevant. Uh, so this is definitely an observational study. Good job. All right, let's look at another data set that's related to this. So uh, you may have noticed that uh, at the top of the home page is an announcement section. And I'll usually post a couple of announcements a week, either some interesting data or just some information I think you need to know. So there've been a few announcements so far just about, hey, get, how to get started in the course kind of thing. Um, right when class started, I had another one that posted here, information about the Pfizer uh, BioNTech COVID-19 uh, vaccine. And uh, somebody had asked me uh, about the vaccine the other day. And so I, I did a little research to get more information. And a lot of times when I, when I do something like this, I go down this internet rabbit hole, right? I start doing a search and that brings me to a bunch of different websites and those bring, websites bring me to other ones. And all of a sudden I have 20 tabs open in my browser uh, trying to figure out the answers to my questions. This one wasn't too bad. Um, I just, I showed my, my train through the internet here uh, where I started with this general information page in my first search, this came up near the top. It came from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, which I've been to their site before. They have pretty good stuff. Uh, reading through that page led me to another page. Recommendations about the vaccine. Oops, I didn't mean to link to the bottom there. Um, and, and this is one I want to uh, focus a little bit on, um, but then I felt I needed to dig deeper. And so that page brought me to this one right here, information about reactions. Um, sometimes reading these, and again, my goal here isn't to go through each of these pages in any kind of great detail, um, but they just give a whole bunch of information. Um, when I look at a table, sometimes it's easy to figure out what their numbers mean and sometimes it's not. Um, so they have a number out of parentheses and a number in parentheses. Let's pull that up a little bit. Uh, this was uh, one of the effects would be redness related to the vaccine, uh, any mild, moderate, severe, grade four. Uh, and then they have an N and a percent. So N just means in statistics count, how many? So it looks like 104 people out of 2,291 uh, had some kind of redness, uh, and that would be 4.5%. So that's what those numbers mean right there. Uh, just a side note there. Uh, this last one I thought was interesting, which led to this cute chart that I have uh, available here below. I'm just going to go to the page where the cute chart originally existed. And then I want to back up and, and look at some information about this study. Control plus on my keyboard, zoom in a little bit here. So this is the cumulative, cumulative incidence curve. And so uh, just like the COVID-19 data from the Oregon Health Authority, uh, whenever they list the cases, that's total cases since they started counting. Um, and in this case, this is uh, a accumulation of the percent of people uh, in the study who got COVID-19. Uh, and, and or, or the ratio. So that's what they're listing on the side here. Uh, so those numbers, I don't believe are percentages, they're actually ratios. Uh, what I mean by ratio 
if we go back here, is 0.51 is the ratio decimal version of 51%. Okay, so 51% uh, as a ratio decimal would be 0.51. That's what I think the numbers on the column, the vertical uh, uh, axis here mean. Uh, and these are the number of days since dose one. Uh, the red graph are the people who got the placebo, and you can see they move up at a pretty constant rate. So that's almost a straight line heading up here. Gets a little worse near the end, a little steeper, <clears throat> which means there were more cases per day later than there were earlier for some reason. Um, and then the blue right here, uh, if you look carefully, you can see the blue is mixed in with the red down here. So for the first seven days, the people who got uh, the vaccine versus the people who got the fake, the placebo, just like sugar water in your arm, um, or probably salt water, uh, they got COVID-19 at the same rate as the unvaccinated, but then all of a sudden, after seven days, the, the body starts to say, oh, we can fight this off. And very, very few new people got COVID-19 after getting the virus, and this is 112 days into the study right here. So is this evidence that it's worth getting the virus if there's not some uh, bad reaction you could have to it? The answer is yes, I, I believe so. So this is an interesting summary graph. Uh, this report is um, readable to people who are in the medical field. I am not in the medical field, so there's a lot of stuff in here that I have to look up and think really hard about. Um, but the data tables, I can kind of piece together what they're talking about. Uh, I just want to go back to, I believe it was this page here. So this is a summary of the report that went to the FDA. And let's see, I copied this to my notes here. Uh, so this again is, is a uh, part of the data the CDC collected along with the FDA. And I just want to take a look at some things about this study. So uh, they say here, the body of evidence for this vaccine was uh, pr primarily informed from one large, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled phase two and three clinical trial that enrolled more than 43,000 participants Median age was 52, age range was 16 to 91 years old. And then the five and the six here means if you want to look up more information, go down to bullets five and six at the bottom uh, to get more information about the, that breakdown. I'm not really too interested in, in that breakdown. Uh, what I am interested in is, is what is this data set? So uh, a couple of things about this. Uh, they have a placebo going on in here. So some people got the real one, some people got the fake one. Uh, so this is definitely an experimental study because they took control over the variable. The variable was the vaccine. Um, now, I'm not a professional in making these kinds of clinical trials, so I'm not really sure what phase two and three clinical trials are, but if you're interested, you could look it up, and if you have any questions about it, ask me and I'll help you sort it out. So I'm not sure about the phase two and phase three. Um, other things I wanted to point out here is what double blind means. So the double blind means that the patient doesn't know. does not know what group they're in. They're in the control group or they in the uh, experimental group, does not know their group. And the double means also the, the physician, the people running the study, they don't know either. Okay, so it's, it's only a select group that do know, but they're not directly involved. They only look after uh, to see what's going on. Um, and so that's a double blind study. If it was just a blind study, only the patient. 
So blind would mean just the patient doesn't know, but we have what's called a double blind, which means the patient and the physician do not know. Uh, other thing here, it is randomized. Usually randomization for something like this comes in a couple of ways. Uh, the selection of people into it uh, is usually some kind of stratified randomization selection. Stratified random selection. And I, they don't talk about the different kinds of random samples in the book. They just bring up the idea of what does random mean. But stratified just means we want so many people in their teens, we want so many people in their 20s, we want so many people in the 30s, and so on. We want so many uh, women and so many men. We want people of this ethnicity and that and, and that ethnicity. So, so they have these quotas they want to meet uh, to try and better represent the population that we're trying to target, which is pretty much everyone in the world, right? So they want lots of variety in here. They don't want to just end up with a bunch of middle-aged white men. They want variety. And so that's the idea of a stratification. Uh, so this, this is not a simple random sample. Uh, it's, a, it's a special stratified random sample, uh, pretty complicated probably the way they did that. Um, and then the second bit of randomization went into who got the placebo uh, and who uh, got the actual vaccine. So there were probably at least two levels of randomization. Uh, the initial selection and then the placement in the group. And they used some computer software to help do this. Uh, based on people that signed up to do it. Um, and often with things like this, there's not just people signing up, there's recruitment. People are going out and trying to find people to be in a study like this. Um, okay, so we are almost done talking about chapter one. Just double checking my notes to see if I covered everything. Almost, there's one more topic I didn't go over yet, so let's do that.